Hey folks, howdy. Sean Brock here with you once again, rolling right on along. And if you wouldn't mind to please subscribe, I would certainly appreciate it. And leave us a comment. Let us know what's going on in your world or what you think of this guitar or any other guitar. On anything you want to talk about with the exclusions of politics. I don't ever do that. Today we got a very, very special one uh, from a very well-known and revered maker, repairman, restoration expert, Martin, guitarist, historian, and I talk about Mr. John Arnold, Newport, Tennessee. And he is one of the uh, fine luthiers representing the state of Tennessee in this collection. There's a decent pass of them there. And John, of course, is legendary for just his, his abilities and his knowledge in the world of guitars. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I think you give this thing a listen and you'll know why he is uh, so well thought of. And, of course, this is a part of the Sunburst D18 collection, the USA Luthier Sunburst D18 collection, owned by Dale Owen, Brevard, North Carolina. Brevard, North Carolina. And if you get over that way, uh, see the description box. If you'd like to run by and play these, he would be more than happy for you to do it. He says that he's going to bring these down to Spigma and uh, some of the guitar shows as well. So if you want to keep track of that, you can get in contact with him. Don't ask me. I don't know nothing. But anyway, let's listen to this fabulous instrument. This mahogany, the tree mahogany, by the way, one of three in the collection that is the tree mahogany and uh, west virginia red spruce from mr john arnold <laughs> I got caught up listening to it ring out. Very, very pretty. Very pretty. Check out the treble. Just warm, thick. Transitions so nicely. Nice man. This guitar sounds very old in the tonally. It sounds really old, but it still has the sustain of a newer build. And this guitar, as I make this video, this guitar, guitar is a little less than a month old. Um, I actually played it 12, less than 12 hours after it was strung up, and it sounded just so broke in. Uh, it hasn't gotten kind of the dryness to the tone. You still got overtones happening here. Long, long sustain on those. 
you still got those and just in my experience at least it, you know a mahogany guitar tend to tr dry out a little bit uh, and reduce a little bit over the as it lives through the seasons uh, everybody else's experience might be a little different check out the bass <laughs> back to the saddle you still got a lot of low right going on there This is such a fun guitar to play. John's work, of course, he, he stays so tied up uh, in restoration work, repair work, and he's a book of knowledge. And if you hang around on the unofficial Martin Guitar Forum, uh, which is umgf.com, or if you hang around the Acoustic Guitar Forum, there is rarely a discussion that John doesn't contribute to when it comes to the history of uh, of guitars or uh, people inundate him with repair questions and geometry questions and and all this stuff and he, he has helped numerous numerous builders and is always free with his information you know and and that that to me says so much about a human being because I've been around a lot of builders in my life and not all of them are that way and John has, uh, he has, he's free with his information, a lot of knowledge, and he loves to share it. I'm going to strum a G chord. I don't know how the man does what he does, but it, it, you hear it. <laughs> Uh, great tone. I'm gonna grab the capo, and we've got the same pick on all of these. I made sure when we started these, I said, let me pick out the pick that has plenty of longevity in the same tip, which I have marked. Uh, that will make sure we get through all these videos with this same plectrum, which is a 1.2 tortoise shell. That's what we've used on all these collection videos. Key of A. on this the warmth uh, the warmth but clarity and balance and the punch really nice
stick out if you want to. You can blend it in if you want to. A lot of control here. Super instrument. As uh, everything in this collection, there there aren't any uh, pound puppies in it. So if you do get a chance to go by and play it, I know you're going to enjoy yourself. And they're not for sale. Uh, they're they're just supposed to be for people to play. And uh, man, what a what a day you will have. B flat. <laughs> to you real well off of the walls which is always fun at least uh, you know it's fun for the player it, it might not be fun for everybody else that lives in the house key of b such a pretty tone up and down uh, you know all the way from the, the end of the fingerboard back to the saddle let's try her out at the fifth fret here <laughs>
goodness sakes. Let's hear some of these tone colors I was talking about here. Man, that is something. Just there to there. There's no ugly spots even back here by the by the saddle. Or or in the extremes, you know, up here by the fretboard uh, extension, fretboard tongue. Sometimes uh, those areas in the extremes either require some playing or maybe don't develop to be quite as pleasant as, as some of the areas say in this region, you know, between those two fingers. So if you get a little too close to the fretboard tongue or if you get a little too close to the saddle, you get some funny stuff going on. Not the case with this thing right here, John Arnold, but I didn't expect nothing, uh, nothing any different out of him. So. Okay, what do I know? Not much. One and three quarter nut. This is uh, a vintage style neck. Uh, I, I would venture to say off of John's 37 plan. Dale, when he, he gave dimensions on the guitars that he ordered, not everything in the collection is stuff that he ordered. Uh, some things were would have been un, unattainable. Some, some of the luthiers in there aren't making instruments anymore and whatnot. Uh, so when he had a choice, he gave uh, dimensions uh, for the necks, and he, he gave those off of the 37 John Arnold plan. And uh, I would imagine John goes with his own plan or kind of close to it, but, uh, of course, this neck is just wonderful. Uh, just uh, the transitions on are, are great. Nothing, uh, the flare, the taper is just real natural if you know for if you like vintage necks which i do thank you john arnold uh one and three quarters two and five sixteenths at the bridge uh ebony bridge slotted uh ebony fingerboard and uh mahogany neck the tree back and sides the famed tree uh one of three uh john arnold wayne henderson joshua young made the three tree guitars in the collection and uh, just beautiful, beautiful stuff. Just wonderful, wonderful. Uh, a bear to work with, I understand, but just absolutely, you know, astounding. If you like figure, you can, it's, uh, you can, you can, it's like a Rorschach test. You can sit here and see all kind of stuff in it. So the tree back and sides, and uh, of course, forward shifted scalloped X again. I I, I would think John kind of sticks around the, the plan that he drew off of his uh, his thirty seven that so so many have copied, and uh, just a bang up instrument. Of course, sunburst that's part of the collection. Uh, this is a nitro cellulose uh, finish. I, I believe I heard John say that he was using a formula of piano lacquer uh, that he liked the way that worked for him. And somebody can correct me. John can correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, pretty traditional appointments. And I'm quite sure these are Goto tuners. It's kind of my favorite these days is Goto. Um, and if you uh, want to see this guitar in person, head down to Brevard and uh, check it out. Dale's got them uh, all in a case up there. And uh, he will have it, like I say, at Spigma. He intends on going to that and some of the guitar shows. And if you got questions or want to link up with him, you can see the description box to contact him. But as always, please subscribe if you wouldn't mind. I would sure appreciate it. And thank you all. And thank you, John Arnold. Thank you, Dale Owen. Take care.